Okay, so let's take a look at solving an equation that actually has an absolute value sign in it. Now, how do you do this? This is actually no big deal at all. The only thing you have to remember, the key to this whole business, is what the absolute value means. So let me just recap this just two seconds. If you want a more extended recap, you can just click somewhere around me and you can actually watch a lecture just on absolute values. But just to sort of refresh your memory, let me tell you that if I write absolute value of A, what does that equal? Well, there are two possibilities, right? There are two possibilities. It either equals A, if A is positive, or it could be negative A, right, if A were negative. So if I say to you that A is some value, let me call it um, a question mark, then what do I know? I know there are two possibilities. Either A equals question mark, or A equals negative question mark. Ooh, maybe you can't see that. I just realized that in you know, my face is, I'm sort of full of myself. So there you go. So either A equals the question mark, or it equals negative question mark. And do you see why? Because when I take absolute values, I'm going to get just the question mark. So if you just remember this basic principle, this will lead you through all these questions. Because basically what you have to do is, if you have an e equality which has an absolute value, that actually means there are two different equalities that you need to solve. One that looks like A equals the thing, and the other one is A equals negative the thing. That's all there is to it. So when you have an absolute value, let me give you a really simple example, and then we'll do a real one. Suppose I tell you absolute value of x equals 3. What's the answer? Well, there are two answers. Do you see it? x equals either 3 or negative 3. You see? So either x equals 3 or, I guess I have to make that fancy little squiggle again, x equals negative 3. Do you see it? So always with absolute values, we're going to have these two equations that require to be solved. One where the, the thing is just with the number, the inside there with the number, and the other one where we have the inside there with negative the number there. Okay? So two answers. Let's now do this with an actual real world, <laughs> real world, right, but a, a more complicated situation. Suppose I have the absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 2. Let's find all the solutions to that. So what do I do? I have to set up two equalities. One is, first of all, if the inside equals 2. And the other possibility is if the inside equals negative 2. Because notice when I take absolute values, in both cases, the absolute value will be 2. Since the inside is blind to negative signs, we have to consider two cases. 3x minus 1 equals 2. And the other possibility, so or, we have 3x minus 1 equals negative 2. Always set them up the same way. We have either absolute equals something, thing equals this, or the thing equals negative that. And now you just solve away. So I bring the, uh, the minus 1 over. I see 3x equals 3, and so x has to equal 1. So there's one answer. If I bring this over here, the minus 1 comes over as a plus 1. I see 3x equals minus 1. I take minus 2 and I add 1. And so therefore, x equals minus 1 third. So these are two answers to this. You can check to see if they're right. If I plug in a 1 here, look what happens. If I plug in a 1 for x, I see 3 minus 1. That's 2. Absolute value of 2? Two? 2. Checks. What about if I put in a minus 1 third? If I put in a minus 1 third, I see minus 1 third times 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. But I'm taking absolute values, so I still get 2. Do you see how I get those two answers with the absolute value? I have the thing with the number itself, and then I have the thing again with negative the number. That's all there is to absolute values. Let's try another example. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, this is a defective piece here. I wish you could see this. All the sticky stuff got all over the place. It's a mess. It's awful. It's all, you're, be thankful that you're not right here with me. All right, look at this one. Absolute. 5 over x minus 3, absolute, equals 10. How would you solve this? Again, the same idea. If I have the absolute value of something, that something either equals this, or that something equals negative this. So I set up two equations. 5 over x minus 3 equals 10. And the other one is 5 
over x minus 3 equals negative 10. Okay, so now we solve these things. So how would you solve this? Well, there are a variety of ways. One thing you can do, for example, is, is cross multiply. If you realize that this is actually 10 over 1, I could cross multiply. And here I would see that uh, 10 times x minus 3, I take this product here. That will equal this product here. Another thing you can do is multiply everything through by the quantity x minus 3, and you get the exact same answer that cancel here. And then what would we have? We'd have 10x minus 30 equals 5. And then how would I solve this? I'd bring the 30 over, and I'd see 10x equals uh, 35. And so I'd see that x equals 35 over 10. And I can reduce that a little teeny bit by dividing top and bottom by 5 and see 7 over 2. So there's one solution. And what's the other solution? Well, I have to solve this now. So I can cross multiply again if you want, or multiply through again by x minus 3. And I would see minus 10 times x minus 3 equals 5. And so I'd see minus 10. I'm distributing now. Minus 10x plus 30 equals 5. If I bring this plus 30 over, it becomes a minus 30. And so I'd see minus 10x equals 5 minus 30 is minus 25. If I divide both sides by negative 10, I would see x equals just 25 over 10, because those negative signs cancel each other out. And if I cut through by the 5, I see 5 over 2. So I see two answers. I see 7 halves, and I see 5 halves. And once again, you can check, plug in 7 halves for x, and see that, in fact, this will actually produce a 10, which in absolute value is equal to 10. And if you put in 5 halves here, you can check that this would actually produce negative 10. But since I'm taking absolute values, I'm still at 10. So in fact, there's always two solutions here when I have an absolute value of this kind. So that's sort of the basics of looking at an equation with absolute values. And actually, up next, what I'll do are some slightly more exotic, slightly more complicated, no new ideas, but just to get a chance for you to see and maybe try uh, some other ones together. I'll see you there.